So, I've been getting some questions about this old uh, GX200 engine that I've got lying around. And uh, if you've been watching my other videos, you'd know, but I um, I bought a uh, Baja Mini bike, which is right there, with, for $60 with this blown up engine in it. And uh, I, I took it apart to figure out that it had a, uh, a broken con rod because the piston had seized. But what I'm pretty much going to do is I'm going to take this engine apart show you all the different things about it, you know, so on the outside before I take it apart I'll just let you know some some of the simple things about what all the pieces are. Start over here, this air filter right here, go ahead and unscrew that with a little, little wing nut, that's the air filter, and underneath the shroud here is the carburetor, here I'll go ahead and take the shroud off. Now the carburetor is accessed by taking off these there's two 10 mil bolts that hold the shroud on. I'll go ahead and take those off here so you can see. shroud just simply slides off. You gotta get it around the uh, the levers, there you go. So here we have the carburetor. This is the choke lever here. That's gonna be choke shut. Push it forward to open up the choke. This is gonna be the fuel tap. That's in the off position. And there's the carburetor which goes into this side of the engine. This is the intake valve here in the cylinder where it's ignited by the spark plug and the exhaust moved out there. I'll go ahead and take the rocker cover off so you can get a look at those valves. Or those rockers, rather. Go ahead and set the camera here. My guess would be someone has taken this off before because all of these, all of these nuts here are really loose. And they should be tight because there's there's an oil seal in here. Break that gasket. There we go. So there's the rockers. This engine, like I said, is blown up. We and uh, the timing gear, sort of fuck. Here's the push rods here. One of the uh, the intake valves. You see the intake valves come off. It's a push rod. See this push rod there, which goes up and down on the cam. And yeah, so I'll go ahead and uh, open up the crank for you. These are all just hand tight. These shouldn't be hand tight, of course. These uh, should be done up very tightly and seated properly. You know, you gotta when you're tightening it up, you have to do one here on the other side, and then down here, then down here, in equal equal amounts of pressure because you have to um, seat the gasket properly. Of course, this engine, like I said, is pretty much garbage, but it's it's worth making a video about. These engines you have on everything. You have these on. Um, Many Chinese mini bikes have them, pumps have them, generators have them, uh, what else, go-karts. A lot of, lot of, lot of motors have them. Go ahead and lean it that way.
this piece of metal here that look, looks just like something that you know is a cover just you know you don't need it you do because what that does is that deflects the air coming from the fan which is underneath that cover where the magneto is deflects the air over the cooling fin so you kind of do need that my brother has one of these engines he's got the chinese one this is a proper honda i should say but he's got a chinese one and he took it off and he was experiencing some some problems with overheating and i'll do it these two things, you see you got one here and one here, they're oil fillers. The one on this side has a dipstick. Go ahead and screw that. The way you check the oil, you don't screw it in, you just push it in lightly in there. And then you take it out. And you see how much there is. There's none in this engine, of course. <laughs> Which is how it met its demise. Previous owner ran it without any oil in it. But no big deal. $60 for a perfectly good bike without an engine. It's a pretty good price. Alright, so we got all those bolts undone, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift up, lift off this, uh, this crank, crankcase cover thing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use my little camera mount thing here. Here we go. So here we have the inside of a GX200 engine. This thing here is the timing gear. See, it's got little little cams on it. And that goes in there, next to the crankshaft, which spins around. They've got little marks, not sure if you'll be able to see, but like right there, there's a little dot. And right there on the crank, there's a little dot, and they have to line up. So. Oh, it's, yeah, it's seized up. And you see you've got little push rods here, so as this turns around, those little things push up those little feet on the push rod, and it opens and closes the valve. It's pretty cool, right? And the problem with this engine, I'll show you the reason it will never run again, is because that right here, this, is the connecting rod. And that should be secured motherfucker should be secured right like that all the way around by a bearing to the crankshaft but it's not because the piston seized and of course it's while it was running and of course this is going to have lots of um what's the word momentum going and it's like uh oh this end's not moving anymore but this keeps going breaks that right there and uh you can see there's lots of scoring done to the, the counterweight then if we look back there, you see a little plastic gear connected to a little, I guess, a lever, you call it. And that works the governor, and that is also needs to be working properly. Because it uh, stops the engine from revving too high, or too low. Because, you know, these engines are not built to rev to the red line. They're built to, you know, 3,000 RPM. And that's about it. That's why, it, you know, it's huge displacement, like 300... 300 cc or 200 cc, 200 because GX 200, but they don't make any more than 5.5 horse because they don't rev. So there, that's the push rod foot there. You see, as I push the push rod, you can actually see it. See, of course, you can see that. I push that down, and it goes down there. Push it up, comes out there. Pretty cool, right? And um, when you're doing the timing, remember what I said about how you have to have the uh, little dots line up? Well, there's two parts to that. Because this is a four stroke engine, right? So this spins around two times. The dot, you know, I'm not here, let me get this lined up so they're positioned properly. There, that that would be correct. There, but the thing is, it's not as simple as that, because this spins around either two or four times. I can't remember for every time this one spins around, because you can see it's a much bigger gear. And the thing about that that's important is it's a four-stroke, so the the entire cycle goes around twice, and it only fires once, you know, so piston comes up, 
intake valves opens, goes down, goes up again, fires, goes down, exhaust valve opens, then it, you know, does it again, pretty much. So, I'm not I'm sure that, that all that correct, because I don't even know what the hell I'm saying, but, so that's pretty much how it works, and, uh, with these engines, if something goes wrong with it, it's going to be probably the carburetor or the spark plug. Always check that first. But if, if you're sure it's a uh, an internal engine problem, it's, you know, this is how you would fix it like that. This engine is pretty much garbage because to get this running again properly, I'd need a new con rod. Turn it around so you can see. A new con rod. And I'd need a new piston, new rings, all that crap. So yeah, that is the inside of a uh, GX200 engine here. It doesn't even turn. Tighten up. Alright. Yeah, so. Plenty more videos to come of the different engines that I have just lying around. So uh, like, comment, subscribe.